So at this point, we have a kind of basic understanding of what oxidation reduction reactions look like, how we can balance them, how we can determine that a redox reaction is happening using oxidation numbers. And now in this video, we're going to actually start to get into the applications and why these types of reactions are interesting and useful. Um, so what we're going to be talking about over the next several videos is how we can actually apply oxidation reduction reactions um, to interconvert between chemical potential energy and electrical energy. So redox reactions um, are able to generate an electric current if they are set up correctly, or we can use an electric current to uh, force certain reactions to happen that may not be thermodynamically favored. So the way that we kind of measure this is through what's known as the electrochemical potential. So our goal for this video is to introduce that idea. So we will mostly be focusing on the standard electrochemical potentials. So the standard electrochemical potential for something. is symbolized E naught, and there'll be a few different types of E naughts as we go through the next few minutes here, um, is the relative measurement of the difference in potential energy for your system between the standard state and the most stable state of your system. So we're going to need to define what is our standard state and what do we mean by most stable state. So our standard state is our system under standard laboratory conditions. which is 25 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere of pressure. And all aqueous concentrations are one molar is part of what we mean when we say standard state. Oops, sorry, concentrations, my bad. So we use this idea of standard state back in thermodynamics when we talked about the standard Gibbs free energy change. Um, and this one molar concentrations thing was true then also, I just didn't mention it because it doesn't ever come into play. It will come into play in this unit. So we're kind of expanding our definition of what does it mean for B to be at standard state. Um, that we're talking about a situation where everything, all reactants and products, if they're aqueous, they have a concentration of one molar. So our most stable state is something we know about is equilibrium. So we're um, using our electrochemical potential as a measurement of essentially how far away are we from equilibrium? How far apart is our potential energy for the system in what we call the standard state versus its equilibrium state? Um, the unit that we use to measure electrochemical potential is the volt, which is symbolized with a capital V. So, um, there are a few different types of electrochemical potential depending upon what type of reaction you're talking about. So we have what's often referred to as the standard electrode potential. 
which is the potential for one half reaction. So the standard potential for a reduction half reaction We symbolize as E naught red for the standard reduction potential. For oxidation, we have E naught ox for our standard oxidation potential. So the standard reduction potential or standard oxidation potential is re referring to the potential for just a single half reaction by itself. We know that um, a single half reaction by itself can't actually happen. They always have to be paired. So we can't actually measure these electrode potentials directly, but they're all measured relative to the same standard. So there's one standard, um, electrode known as the standard hydrogen electrode, which is the reduction of hydrogen ions to hydrogen gas. And we consider that to be zero. So you don't specifically need to know that, but just be aware that we're not able to measure the potential directly for a half reaction because we can't just do one half. We have to do a whole redox reaction. So when you put a reduction and an oxidation together, we know that we get a redox reaction. And we have, we can measure the potential for an entire reaction, which is usually what we're interested in, since that's what we're actually doing, is a reduction and an oxidation together. And we refer to that as the standard cell potential. Which is symbolized E naught cell. So this is the standard potential for a complete redox reaction, both half reactions combined. And conveniently, our cell potential is just equal to the reduction potential for the reduction half reaction plus the oxidation potential for the oxidation half reaction. So relatively easy and straightforward to calculate. Um, and these quantities, these half reaction potentials are the kind of thing that you just look up. Look up in a table. So they'll be given to you. It's not something that you can just figure out. It's not something you can really calculate without doing an experiment, um, but there exist very lengthy tables of all sorts of reduction potentials. Um, typically, what you find is lists of standard reduction potentials, and then the standard oxidation potential, you can actually figure out. Since it is equal and opposite, oxidation and reduction are opposite reactions, they're reverse of one another. Um, so they're equal in magnitude and opposite in sign. So if you have a list of reduction potentials, you essentially have a list of oxidation potentials as well. You just need to flip the sign on everything for the reactions running in reverse. Um, so for our cell potential, our cell potential tells us whether a reaction is thermodynamically favored or not, it actually tells us which direction the reaction will go. Um, so our value of E naught cell can tell us whether the reaction is thermodynamically favored. So whenever E naught cell is positive, that means our reaction is thermodynamically favored.
which means that it will run spontaneously in the forward direction. We'll include that. So it runs spontaneously forward. When E naught cell is negative, means that our reaction as written is thermodynamically disfavored. Which means that it will run spontaneously in reverse. And when E naught cell is equal to zero, our system is at equilibrium. E naught cell is measuring the difference between the standard state and equilibrium. If there is no difference between the standard state and equilibrium, you are at equilibrium when you are at the standard state. Um, so, I want to do a couple examples of calculating the value of E naught cell. So we're going to need a list of standard reduction potentials, which I've got down here. Let's move this up a bit. So we can see here that we have this list of standard reduction potentials. We're given the reduction half reaction for a bunch of different substances, as well as the potential, standard potential value for each of those different things. Um, so this is all we need to be able to calculate the value of E naught cell for a reaction. So let's say we have lead to reacting with cobalt to to produce lead and cobalt three. So what we need to recognize here is what is being oxidized and what is being reduced based on the oxidation numbers. So in this example, we just have monatomic ions. So our oxidation numbers are just gonna be equal to our charges. So we have plus two for the lead two plus, we have plus two for the cobalt two plus, we have zero for the lead, and we have plus three for the cobalt three plus. So we can see that our lead is being reduced from a plus two oxidation state to a zero oxidation state. And cobalt is being oxidized from the plus two to plus three oxidation state. So to calculate E naught cell, our standard cell potential is just the reduction potential for our reduction half reaction plus the oxidation potential for our oxidation half reaction. So we just need to find those numbers from our list. So our lead to, to lead zero reaction is right here. So note, or remember that all of these as they are given are reduction half reactions and reduction potentials. So we can read our reduction potential straight off of our table here. So the reduction potential for lead two to lead zero is negative 0 0.13 volts coming straight off our list here. So the other one is an oxidation of cobalt two to cobalt three. So we're not going to find that exact reaction on our list here because it's an oxidation and we're looking at a bunch of reductions. But we find the reverse reaction of cobalt 3 being reduced to cobalt 2. So this is the reduction potential. The 1.92 is the reduction potential. We 
we need our oxidation potential, which is just changing the sign. So our oxidation potential will be negative 1.92 volts. And once we have that, we can add those two numbers together. So our E naught cell will be negative 0 0.13 plus negative 1.92, which is negative 2.05 volts. So as long as you recognize when you need to change the sign, that whatever is being reduced, that potential stays exactly as you found it on your list. Whatever is being oxidized, you find that potential and you change the sign. Then you add those two things together and that gets you your cell potential overall. Um, note that we don't even need to balance this or anything. Um, your cell potentials, your half reaction potentials, are never multiplied by your coefficients or anything. You literally just take, take the numbers from the list, one of them changes sign, and then you add them together. You never need to multiply or divide or anything like that. Um, so let's look at one more example. Um, so why don't you pause here and try to do the same thing for this one. So you'll need to identify what's being reduced and what's being oxidized, and then identify your reduction and oxidation potentials and add them together. So pause here and try that on your own. So first up, we need to identify what is being reduced and what is being oxidized. If we look at our oxidation numbers, which in this case are again the same as our charges, we have gold going from plus three to zero. So that is a reduction since our oxidation number is decreasing, is being reduced. And then nickel is going from zero to plus two, oxidation number increasing represents an oxidation. So looking at, looking for our potentials, we need to find the reaction that involves gold three and gold zero. And that one is up here, second from the top. Nope, that is incorrect, that's gold one, sorry. Gold three and gold zero is this one. Um, do make sure you pay attention to the charges. Yep. Um, this one was gold plus one, which is not the charge that was given in the reaction, which was plus three. So we wanna make sure we're using that reaction. Gold is what's being reduced. So we're gonna take that value exactly as it is. And that is our standard reduction potential of 1.498 volts. And then we need to find the reaction that involves nickel two and nickel which is here right beneath lead. And we're gonna take that value and change the sign. Since the nickel is being oxidized in this reaction, we need the oxidation potential, which is going to be positive 0.26 volts. Um, note that the inclusion of the positive sign here is not strictly necessary, but it is something that you will see pretty commonly. And I tend to do just to avoid confusion most of the time. Of course, I'm not being consistent with myself. I should put one in there as well. <laughs> if I'm gonna do it, I should do it all the time. Um, not strictly required, but it's commonly put in there. So at this point, we just need to add these two values together to get our cell potential. So 1.498 was our reduction potential. 0.26 was our oxidation potential. So our cell potential overall is 